Good morning, or afternoon or evening, because I'm not sure when you're listening to this. This is Deborah Leanne, and I am here with you today to bring forth a bit more of authenticity, authentic life, authentic leadership, and authentic um, loving in this day and age of contrast, lots and lots of contrast. And I don't know if you know this, but we are upon the equinox. Some celebrate the equinox on the 20th of September and some on the 21st. And it's the time of year, whether you're in the North or South Hemisphere, that you approach that equal time of day and night. And it's a very magical time for me. For many, we feel the beginnings of new education. The kids go back to school. Um, Many adults go back to school. Um, We're upon the closing out of the year and already planning into the next year. And the farmers are, are reaping all of the produce and the abundance of what they sowed earlier in the spring. I love the fall for various reasons. One is the temperatures and the crunching of the leaves underfoot, but also because it gives me a great opportunity to take stock, to look at what has been created um, during this cycle of intense growth during the summer, and to prepare for, just like squirrels, putting away the squirrel, putting away our nuts and acorns to to kind of go underground, to go within during the winter. And I am curious if you are feeling that sense of change. You know, and the cycles are beautiful of the seasons. We are constantly changing and moving through life cycle of beginning and growing and you know, falling away and regenerating. And um, each of those cycles has a very important purpose in our life. And they show up that way in our business. They show up that way in relationships. and, um, And I feel like that we are creatures of these cycles. And many, many times we don't honor them. We try to just push through and not realize that that this is something, a time for us to let go. The leaves are dropping from the trees because they need to so that they can create the beautiful mulch that goes into our gardens and regenerates into a fabulous new soil to grow new crops. The trees then get a chance to focus on preparation for blooming again the next year. And we rarely honor ourselves and our bodies and our minds and our spirits in the same way. There's a reason why fall is a wonderful time to have retreats. Because we look back at what we've created. We slow down and start looking into the inner world of our life and the preparation of who we are becoming and and being quiet and still enough to let some of that inspiration come forth. And the question that's been on my mind, well, questions, the series of questions that have been on my mind this week have been about what do I want to stop doing? What do I want to start doing? What do I want more of in my life? What do I want less of in my life? And those are important questions to ask, not just once, but several times in the next week or two or the next month, because it gives us every day we'll feel a little bit differently. We might get a richer or wider view of where we are going and where what we're becoming and who Do we want to be around us to help support us, to help nurture us, to help hold us as we go through our cycles? 
it is so important to have that circle of people who really see you, who remind you of how amazing and brilliant and beautiful and perfect you are in all of your imperfection. To be the person that we can call when we just need to process through something, whether it's shame or celebration or expansion and the discomfort that goes in that as we grow into the next level of our becoming. Who is that for you? It might be a book club. It might be a sisterhood circle. It might be people that you know online that you've shared more with than you have ever shared with your intimate friends and family. It might be your lover. And whoever it is, hold them close and let them know how important they are to you. And if you need to expand and you want to expand and you want to grow beyond maybe the current level of this group's reflection of you, then maybe it's time to seek out a new circle. I have taken this year to really scale back on the networking and who I want to hang out with. And it's totally shifted the level of professionalism and who I am becoming. It's helped me to format a better um, and more true and authentic path for where I want to go in my business. And it's a little scary because I swore four or five years ago when I first started doing this women's leadership catalyzing and the branding people I was working with were like, so you're taking this into corporate, right? And I was like, oh, no, no, I I don't think corporate is ready for me. I don't, I, I think I couldn't, I think I would feel stifled. I think I would feel like they would think I'm a weird woo woo person. And I am a woo-woo person. I get that. And that doesn't always fly in the corporate world. And yet, the more I am showing up as me, as truly authentic me, sometimes I feel, I can feel my own sense of inner critic in the way of, well, everybody else is dressed a little different from you, you know, or, um, Maybe next time you should wear that pair of heels just to put you into a place of feeling more professional or confident or any of that stuff. And it's not anybody else's judgment of me that I'm nearly as worried about as as it's my own inner critic. So I'm playing with that right now. And let's, let's just take a minute to honor that in ourselves and get present in this moment by breathing in all of our power, breathing forward all of who we are becoming, breathing in the connection that we have through the electromagnetic sharing of energy that we have with Mother Earth and with the planets and the stars and the moon and the sun, calling forth our connection to all the elements of fire, which I think of as the sun, earth, which I think of as Mother Earth, the air in the sky and the wind, and water, which is our inner, the majority of this physical body is water. And a lot of that is symbolic of our emotions. Each of those different parts of us have distinct lessons to share. And it's time that we listen. It's time that we plug in and truly listen. Let's breathe in that wisdom of who we are. Let's breathe in the wisdom of who we are becoming. Let's breathe out who we were. And let's breathe out all of the anxiety that comes in stepping forward into our power. Let's breathe in and as our chest expands, allow our aura to expand, the energy that surrounds us to expand, that 
beautiful, energetic um, connection that we have to all, let that expand. The funny thing about expanding and growing into our next level of being is that we're automatically doing that whether we know it or not. But when we consciously are aware of the growth and expansion, I believe that we actually are able to hear more of what we need to do this in a way that is filled with grace and joy and positive energy and support and inspiration, you know, to know what the next right moves are. The next person that, you know, would be the perfect person to rendezvous with to uh, support us and help us grow. The perfect teachers, the perfect support system, the perfect lovers, the perfect opportunities, the perfect perfect potential clients, the perfect potential collaborators. And I want to be able to hear that. So slowing down at this time and listening and asking, what is it that I want to do more of? What is it that I want to become more of? What is it? And to do that, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? Because once we claim that and own it and say, I realize, I know that when I do X, I feel less energy. When I hang around with so-and-so, I feel, I feel less than and and incompetent, and I don't want to feel that anymore. Who makes me light up with the most amazing, shining self that I can be? And how can I tap into that shining self even when that person's not with me? This is what the SHINE program is about, and this is where more and more women are using the term SHINE when they are filled with their own confidence and energy of excitement and passion and purpose and pleasure, that intersection of passion, purpose, and pleasure that lights us up in a way that we cannot help but glow and radiate with a magnetic energy that people can feel and connect with. The rest of this year is going to be um, an opportunity for me to do some revamping to how can I take shine into more corporate settings, to looking at where to collaborate more with people on leadership development um, in, and to create more social impact and change in the world, where people are consciously wanting to be at the edge of, of uh, the evolution of where leadership is going in service to the innovation and creativity that we are it, the only way to deal with the volatility and uncertainty of our current um, global happenings. And leadership that is continuing to do what it has always done isn't going to, it doesn't, it's not going to fly anymore. The paradigm is shifting all over. And I love running into more and more places where people centric and everybody matters and the everyone culture, all of these amazing books that are coming out in support of how to have truly healthy, inclusive organizations, not where People are let out of the inner circles because they don't play golf or they don't go to the same church or they don't um, have the same gender or the same skin color or, you know, the big decisions on how do we run the organizations can no longer be made over a, a whiskey in a back room. And I think that's beginning to shift, but we still have a long way to go talking with my friends this morning at our breakfast club that's quite filled with activism, I, I hear the stories again and again of where there isn't access 
So that's the new thing. It's not just inclusivity, but we, we need to require access so that everyone is included and at the table. I am hosting my first retreat coming up October 13th and 14th. It's a Friday night. We're gathering a Friday afternoon and we'll head through the evening and all day Saturday. And we're going to be delving into allowing ourselves to have the freedom to shine even more brightly, to be more impactful as leaders, but also by giving ourselves the permission to truly shine from the inside out, to lead from the inside out, to love from the inside out. Because when we live our life in that way, we are leading. We are modeling what it looks like to be powerful and feminine, to be authentic and filled with integrity, to be conscious and competent, to be confident and courageous. And if this is something that calls to you, let's connect. I'm happy to buy you a cup of coffee and talk and see if this is the right group because I really only want it to be the right people for the best experience for everyone. It's kind of a sacred reciprocity thing that everyone will be bringing to the circle their uniqueness, which will feed the fire of the uh, shine that we'll all walk away with. And the experience is designed purposely. I mean, I've got a number of exercises and practices, but it will be unique and customized as to who's there and what everybody's ready for. And if this is something that your heart is feeling called to do, really yummy food, really beautiful setting, really amazing space to gather, to be still, to dance, to move in all of who you are, let's talk. So the questions for you this week are really to think about who am I, who am I becoming? What do I want more of? What do I want less of? And given that I want more of that, what am I willing to stop doing? What am I ready to stop doing? And what am I ready to start doing? What practices needed to be need to be added to my life? What needs what might be needing to fall off my calendar so that there's more time to sleep, read, sing, dance? Be still, be active, and if you'd like some guidance on that, many of this is, these questions are not as easy to ask yourself as they are for someone else to ask you and to help you see what is true for you and what is not, because we are really good at lying to ourselves. That's a whole nother topic, isn't it? Mm, I think I'll save that for another time. So until our next time together, take excellent care of yourself. And next Wednesday, I'll be in Park City, Utah in the mountains and at a beautiful ski chalet at a global leadership conference. And I am going to be so jazzed with information. I cannot wait to share with you in October what direction the uh, leadership work I'm going to be doing in the world is. But until then, next week might be a recording of a previous show, so please allow me that space. Or if there's something that's really critical that I want to share with you, I'll reach out and record it. So until our our next time together, take excellent care of you, shine brightly, and do some internal landscaping. See what's going on in there. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.